Apparently, silence is not golden in all situations, as several stakeholders of the Amata Kun Security Initiative have called out Bola Tinubu for a silence as regards the initiative. An opposition party, People's Democratic Party, is still very unhappy about the Supreme Court's judgment that sacked Emeka Hedor as the Imo State Governor and have embarked on a protest to demand for its reversal. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. Yoruba elders of the Afeni Fere have come for Bola Hamed Tinubu, former governor of Lagos State, and for keeping quiet over the Western Nigerian Security Network, codename Operation Amotekun, also known as Operation Amotekun Security Outfit, established by this re the region's governors. Now, they've gone further to state that he will never be the president of the nation. And could there be a connection between the elder statesman's silence and a 2023 presidential ambition? Joining us to discuss this this evening on Plus Politics is legal practitioner Nobel Obasi. Good evening, Nobel, and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. And also with us this evening is Babashola Adegbuyi, a political analyst. Thank you very much, Babashola, for joining us also. Good evening. So I want to hope at the end of the evening we'll have a balanced and fair show, knowing we have a political analyst and also a legal practitioner on the show this evening. Absolutely. Now let's get into it. How paramount is it for Bola Ahmed Tinubu to speak out at this point in time? Let's start with you, Babashola. Um, it's very important, and the main reason is because this is a man we all know quietly has going about uh, um, cajoling people for presidential election in 2023, and uh, being a leader of the ruling political party and uh, a former governor of Lagos State, go, uh, Lagos State of Lagos State. Yes, is expected of him to have him one way or the other. I've said one thing about the Hamotekun. Um, uh, was it called security, security outfit, security outfit yes. that was established about two years ago by the six governors in the southwest? Right. But the silence means a lot of things, uh, which personally I cannot for and for so many reasons know why he has been quiet concerning the Amotekun. Okay, and uh, I'm very sure it could be as a result of his ambition in 2023. You know, the mayor Allah has uh, come out to say that for uh, for bringing out this security outfit, there will be no presidential election, uh, there will be no, uh, the presidency will not be zoned <coughs> to Southwest. Maybe he could have looked at it and said, oh, I don't want to offend these people in case the time comes for in 2023 for me uh, to be able to talk to them and maybe win them on my side. Then uh, it could have been as well. The leaders in, in Southwest have already spoken. So what does that want to say? It could be the end of the two. All right, Nobel Basset, you want, you want to react to, to that, man? Okay, so uh, what I would say about uh, Bola Met uh, uh, silence is that uh, as an individual, he has every right to be silent to national issues. But then I understand the worry of, uh, of the Southwestern uh, yes. as to why he, he doesn't want to say anything. I mean, their worry stems from the fact that uh, he's, he's, he's a key figure in, in the Southwest. He's, he's, he's seen as a titan, as a political titan. Yes. And, um, it's seen as someone who's very close to the president, so they feel um, any voice he would lend to to what is currently going on would go a long way to decide whether the uh, operation Amoteku would stay or go. So I feel their stand on his silence or their stand on his um, inability not to say anything is comes out from his personality, his personal uh, inclination towards uh, the ruling party, which is a, a, a public figure, and his position as a public figure yes. in the ruling party as well. Okay, we, we can't we can look past the fact that um, Ahmed Bola Tinubu was a one-time Lagos State Governor, and also he's a very, he's a leading political figure when it comes to the Southwest right yes. now. Now, what, what influence do you think is speaking out will wield on this controversy around Amotekun, or is this just, is people calling for a kindred spirit. Let us know you're, you're with us, you're speaking for us, you're for us. Well, uh, politically, he has a lot of influence and it's expected that whatever voice he lent to uh, the uh, security outfit will have uh, a lot of weight to it. Um, but the truth is, uh, whether he says something or not, um, the decision of either the federal government or the sixth Southwest governor we still stand. 
his own is just people want, I'm very sure that what people want to, is to hear to hear his own view. So is this more a call for a kindred spirit? Because I mean he he's key in the southwest and he's not saying anything. So is this more for a particular political reason or the fact that Amote Kongo is, is constitutional or the act is just for a kindred spirit? But if you're sure you're not against us, speak up at this point in time. Okay. Definitely it's uh, it's, it's, it's about a political uh, what's it called? <clears throat> spirit because okay. uh, uh, his silence for me is political, like I said earlier, it's very political. And I'm, I'm very sure he's doing this because of, um, of not offending either the federal government, the political party. But we can't say for the, sure if that is That's reason. what I said <laughs> yeah. personally. Yes. You get it. He doesn't want to offend those people that we support him in 2023. So he doesn't want to do so. He's trying to be careful of what comes out of his mouth. That's number number two. How many things has he actually voiced his mouth or uh, lent his mouth to say for the past uh, since 2019? Mm -hmm. I doubt if there if there are more than one or two since the uh, 2019 election. Yeah. So he has been quiet in a way, but we all know a lot of things have been going on under it. Yes. So for me, it's political. It's political. Even those, yeah. even those that are actually calling him out, they is also political. All this um, take of it in, uh is not talking. It's political because they are looking for a way to attack him. And one of the things one of them made mention of is that we want you not to support uh, Buhari in uh, 2015. You supported him, but yeah, come, come and talk. Now you are not saying anything. It shows that you are either in support of, uh, it, it, it shows that you are either in support of the government or you are. Uh, against the Amotekun. Now, now Noble uh, Obasi, let me ask you this. I mean, what, what difference do you think this will, will make if Bola Tinubu speaks out? And like I rightly asked, is this just a, a kindred spirit call to, to, to make his people know that, you know, you, I'm still with you people. I, I believe in what you were doing. What difference do you think this will make if Bola speaks out? Okay, so I think uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's both ways. Okay. It's uh, both a, a call for kindred spirit mm -hmm. and uh, it's both... Um, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a test on its political uh, interest. Okay, so the first one, call for uh, kindred spirit. Yes. So they want to know uh, if he's really with, with them and if he has not been frolicking with uh, the so-called northerners. Because uh, they are, some quarters have alleged that uh, he's kind of sabotaging his people in a way. Why politically they want to test their interest? Don't forget that some of these um, southwestern governors belong to the ruling party as well. So. But then, what 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 uh, brings out or what um, uh, Max Ab Ahmed Bola, uh, Senator Ahmed Bola Tinibu is the fact that uh, he perhaps you know there are some um, uh, um, what would I call it now? Okay, so so there are some insinuations in some quarters that he's not seen a, 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 a presidential ambition. ambition in 2023. So perhaps as someone who who's uh, who's not seen such ambition. As a man, someone who's not such ambition is trying to be careful about his utterances so that he might not jeopardize his chances. So I feel they want to know his stand in 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 affairs in the affairs of Southwest, and also they need you know they need his voice because Bola Ahmed. Don't forget don't forget the monument, monumental effect of uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu towards uh, uh, Buhari's election uh, in uh, two thousand and. Uh, uh, 15. 15, exactly. So he was actually the brain box, you know, behind uh, most of what you see, most of the Southwest uh, 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 vote to, to Buhari. So yeah. they, they believe he is, is it? Like, as I earlier said, um, as I earlier said, he's a titan in the Southwest. And so they want to, they, so they, they know his voice would lead, we, uh, we, we give credence to, you know, to uh, the operation of Motec. Okay. Now, you're, you're a legal practitioner. Yes. The AGF, um, the federal government through the office of the AGF proscribed the outfit as illegal. Yes. Now, um, within the provision of the law and constitutionally, we have other security outfits operating in the north, like we have the JTF, we have the HISPA. Okay. Um, within the provision of the law and constitution, mm -hmm. is a Motec illegal as proscribed by the AGF? Yes, it is illegal. Within okay, the, you want to throw more light on that? Uh, so, uh, under the exclusive... And then when you do, then you let us know the other op, um, security outfits operating in the north, like okay. I just mentioned, the JTF the and the HISBA. Okay, so JTF... What are the, the operations? Okay, so the JTF should be the Joint, joint, the joint Tax, tax Force, force right? yes. Okay, so are there civilians within the Joint Tax Force? Because from what I see in the Southwest here, Joint Tax Force are, uh, comp uh, comprises of um, the police, the Navy, 
and the army. So I, I, I don't think I've seen um, any joint task within the Southwest that has got any civilians. So I wouldn't know how they operate. The operation is. But then I, I, I hear about Hizba. Yeah. So it's illegal. I'm not taking it's illegal. So, so I would think Hizba also it's illegal as well. But then, um, so it's an aside statement. So I feel when states are threatening, uh, uh, when they are, the security of states are threatening, they might uh, want to go a step further to perhaps um, establish, um, say, Secu state security apparatus, but then it's illegal. What makes it illegal within, within uh, the confines of the law? So if you could just throw more light on that. Okay, so what makes it illegal is, is that um, under the exclusive release, it just gives the, uh, the, the executive, the, you know, the, uh, the exclusive power, you know, to establish security operatives, to, you know, to ensure the security of the country. So anything contrary to that, anything contrary. So if any security operative is not coming from, say, um, uh, from the say from the act or uh, maybe an executive order, then it's illegal. So um, Amotek is not coming from the federal Baba government. Baba you want to react to that quickly? Well, actually, yeah. um, I'm not a lawyer. Okay. But one, thing, uh, one question I do ask people is, if it's illegal, why did they call governors chief security officer? I was going to come to that. I was going to ask um, <laughs> yeah. So why did they call governors chief security officer? Whether it's legal or illegal, um, I'm not interested. What I'm interested now is about the protection. I'm interested in the protection of the people. I'm interested in protection of the properties. I'm interested in anything that can save lives. That's what I'm interested in. Yes, the six governors in one way or the other would have made mistake in establishing the security outfit. Um, while listening to some of them, I discovered that some steps were not taken rightly. Number one, uh, uh, number one, they, they did not contact the federal government, although the Nigerian police was contacted, not the federal government, the Nigerian police was contacted. That was number one. Number two, um, there is no act or bill anywhere supporting... So you're saying the federal government was in blind spot to the well, organization of Amotekun? Nigerian to police the is point aware of the launching of Amotekun. Mm -hmm. Nigerian police is aware, okay. but I'm not sure of the AGF because I doubt uh, because I doubt if the AGF was aware of that security outfit before the uh, particular period it was uh, launched. You get so I officially I mean now so for me um, if they are if if the Nigerian police is aware. I believe Nigerian police in one way or the other would have advised the state governors on how to go about the security uh, outfit. Okay. That's number two. Number three, the question now is, who is in charge of Amotekon? What is the heart? Whatever they are doing, is it, is it backed by law? Are you handing over? Uh, are they going to be holding weapons? Who will be buying the weapons for them? Unlike uh, Ishba. Each bar too, as far as I'm concerned, is illegal. Because I doubt if that if it is also uh, what's it called? Supported by the constitution in any way. But like I said earlier, as long as the lives of the people and the properties are be, are going to be what protected, I don't care. Because the truth is the night security uh, in Nigeria is already overwhelmed. The Nigerian police. The Nigerian Army, Nigerian Navy, and Air Force. This is all over because of the uh, uh, because of the insecurity in Nigeria. The Boko Haram is there. We are talking of kidnapping. We are talking of a lot of things happening everywhere. Mm. So if 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 in Southwest we don't have enough, and the governors think of about uh, coming together, establishing a security outfit to support to support the security, then. For me, I support. All right, um, let me come to you now. You, while you were talking, you did say something. Uh, the security outfit was launched by the Southwestern governors, as we are very aware. And it's, it's not a faction or a group like the OPC or the Afenifere, but the OPC yeah. and Afenifere will be involved in the operations yes. of Amotekun. Yes. All right, so the question is, shouldn't the group like, um, shouldn't that give it some type of legitimacy by law and state principle on security, knowing that the governor of the state is the number one executive um, office of that state and has the duty also to provide security for the state. Okay, so, so I would imagine that uh, when, the constitution, when the constitution is being made and then when the um, um, uh, executive uh, list, uh, you know, okay, so there are executive uh, lists, yes. there is concurrent uh, list, then there is um, uh, exclusive. exclusive. 
sorry, exclusive and concurrent. Con sorry, exclusive and concurrent. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, so um, I, I would imagine that uh, when that one was, when, when those uh, lists were made, that uh, there was no intention for, say, the uh, executive to uh, kind of uh, bequeath uh, power of security to the state governor, to state governors. So in that light, uh, any security apparatus formed by, this, by the state government runs contrary to the exclusive list. And the exclusive list is being controlled uh, because the exclusive list is based on the functions of the executives. So anything that is in the exclusive list, the state governors, can, they cannot legislate on that. So anything which is contrary to the exclusive list is illegal. But, but sorry, sorry, let me okay. just let me first um, put your thought out there. But isn't this a sign that there's a failure on the side of the federal government to secure the people of the state? Because they didn't just rise up that they were, they were trying to curb the um, spate of incessant killings and kidnapping that has been ravaging the states in the southwest. So isn't this a failure on the part of the federal government? Uh, to, 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 to a large extent, uh, yes, because this, the security of the country lies in the hands of the federal government. So they should be able to do everything possible within their means to make sure that the life and security of all individuals in Nigeria is secured. So if the state government is bringing out security apparatus to complement the efforts of the federal government, then I would imagine that there is a lacuna somewhere. There's a lacuna in terms of their functions, in terms of their security functions. So I think... Uh, the state governors, the state governments, you know, being very close to the people at the state level, they will want to do everything to protect not just the people, but then themselves as well. Because I mean, you have things where uh, I mean, we have cases where perhaps uh, you see a, a state go a government almost attacked by hoodlums. So, but in their own view, if those security apparatus are in those states, they will be able to tackle those menaces without having to recall to. Uh, say, the Nigerian police or any established uh, security apparatus in Nigeria. Yeah. About Shala, you were going to say something. Yes, uh, even before the establishment of this um, each state, each state has what we call vigilant group. Vigilant haze, yes. Yes, you get it. So they were working, I believe, at, at, the, at the state level, the, the, the vigilante was uh, actually backed up by law. So. I believe the, the, the cry now is because the Southwest states are coming together. If we're to be, I, I want to believe if we're to be state by state, the two wouldn't have been so noisy as it is now mm -hmm. because uh, I, I, there is a law, or let me say, what do you call it at the state it's level? It's law. law. Yes. Yeah, there is a law backing the security. Mm -hmm. But at regional level, that is where the problem is. That's where the problem is. So what they need to do, yes, it has been established. They started in one way or the other. Um, whether the federal government likes it or not, what I believe the state governors need to do is to support it by law, to ensure it is recognized by law. Because the truth is, if it is not recognized by law, as made known by most of our, our lawyers, then everything they are doing is illegal take it to the National Assembly, or what you need to do is to get it a, uh, 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 the, the, the state house uh, assembly, support it, then they can work together. So. All right, um, Pa'ayo Adebanjo has, has alleged that Tinubu's alliance with the North and being promised the presidency 2023 is the reason he's is so quiet and mute on, on the matter. Do you want to agree with his, with his thoughts? <laughs> I, well, I'm not in his mind, so yeah. I wouldn't be able to uh, say uh, uh, that um, to support what he said about uh, Tinibu uh, not speaking out because of, in of his ambition. Yeah. Because, I mean, Tinibu is, 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 is an adult, so he has the right to com comment on um, issues, whether he wants, he has the right to comment on issues or not. Because, I mean, if he doesn't want to comment on issues, then it's fine. Then he's, if he, he wants to comment, then it's fine. But then, considering his position as a key political figure in the North, that, that, that was what drove, um, I, I think that's a motivating factor for uh, pa, um, Ayo, Ayo Adebanjo. Adebanjo. Yes, that was, the, that was one of, that's the, I would imagine that would be the major reason why he would want uh, Tinibu to voice out. On, um, on, yeah, because he did, he did say that Tinibu came around rallying support and votes in the southwest yes. in, in, in Buari's um, yes. 2015 yes. presidential election. And they did say that Buari was not going to keep to his promises. Nothing was going to change in the Southwest. And that it's high time now that Tunibu should speak up because yeah. he came around 
convincing them yes. to 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 um, give their votes to to Bari. Yes. Now let, let's let's bring this on the table. A former governor of Kaduna State, Balari Musa, came out some days ago to say um, the federal government should not allow Motekun go through, and that he sees it as as a grand plan to establish the Odudua um, country. Republic. Yes, republic. Yes. Let's put on that a little bit. This is an SY governor of, of, of Kaduna State, Balari Musa. Now he rightly said when he was speaking that if these regions are not come together. If it's just individual states, mm -hmm. then maybe there won't be so much controversy yes, about it right now. Yes, I, I, so, are there, are there elements? Are there elements of truth in this? I mean, maybe there's there's a fear at the end of the day that um, if this Amotekun is not checkmated right now, mm -hmm. it might actually become something else like Biafra. Okay, okay, uh, okay. So, I, I, I get, I get, I, I can sense um, the uh, perception of uh, Alaji Musa, yeah, because it. it if I was reading a daily where he, he, he made mention of Boko Haram, that that was how he started. But then I, I, I understand his fear, you know, about, um, you know, what could be the possible end to the group. Say when they've become so powerful and institutionalized that would they, you know, work within the ambit of yeah. the law or would they go rogue? So I understand what he's trying to say. But then again, I wouldn't, I don't think if properly controlled, if properly controlled, I wouldn't think they would want to, you know, Form Odudua Republic because Nigeria has gone far, way far than you know uh, trying to you know create um, a republic under the Nigeria you know under the federal government of Nigeria. Yes. So Nigeria has gone past that in, you know that stage now. So I don't think it's I don't think it's a, it's an attempt. I don't think Operation Amoteku is an attempt to create an Odudua Republic. Baba Shola, you want to react to that? Well, for every action, there is always a different perception. Mm. People do come out to give their perceptions, whether they see it as a threat or they see it as a, 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 a plus. You get so for Balarabi Musa. Uh, but in this stance, it is seen, it is considered to be, it, it, it is a threat. It is, it is seeing yeah. it as a threat. Yeah. Maybe the, uh, uh, the, the uh, Southwest is trying to come together and ensure nobody from the other part of the uh, country comes into the uh, region. They want to be in total control. You get, but the truth is this. Amotekun is not only for Yoruba, it's for everybody in the Southwest. That's number one. Number two, the Southwest states governors have been meeting for a very long time, even since 1999. I know they have a lot of uh, companies together that are established by, um, by them, registered by them, that they're giving the, I know when my bank is one of the banks, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the companies. I know Lagos Airport is one of the companies. Odua. So, uh, yes. Odua Investment. Odua Investment. So even there was a time they came up with the telephone uh, communication stuff, that I don't know the end of that one. So they, it, it, for me, it, it's just its own perception. And I'm not, I don't think it will lead to that stage. But the truth is, the question I will always ask is this. Who is Amotekun reporting to? How is it going to be funded? Who is going to be the leader of Amotekun? What is the control behind Amotekun? If all those things are not checked, well, maybe it might turn to uh, uh, it, it might turn to a rogue Yes, hmm. later yeah. in the future. Okay. Now this is this is a democracy, yes. and Tinubu happens to be like the leader of the ruling party. Um, is he obligated by law to speak out on this matter? No. Or it's a matter of morality, um, what is politically correct and expected of him to do as a leader in the Southwest? Yes. Morality and what is expected of, of, of him to do as a political leader? Mm. Yes. Well, obligation? No. Now, um, his, his media advisor, Rahman, has come out to say that Tinubu wouldn't take issues with anybody on the matter of Amatokun and that at the appropriate time, he would speak. Bashola, what is the appropriate time you think to, to <laughs> the, should have spoken up or when, when is the appropriate time for him to speak? Well, the appropriate time is when the noise is all over. Not when the noise I, is all over right now? Yes. yes. Not after everybody has forgotten about, say, Amotekun, that I now come out and talk. Or not after the, the, the federal, not after Buhari has spoken, not after maybe the law has been taken. No, it is expected of him to speak now. Just like he said, as far as I'm concerned, he has the right to speak 
or not to speak. He's the leader of a political party and uh, he's from the southwest. Maybe he's being careful so that he will not be tagged as, uh, what do they call them? Um, a decent, a political decent. Okay. Yeah. So, now, now la lastly on this segment now, um, okay. bearing in mind that Tinubu himself is in, isn't in government. Yeah. He's not in government right now. Now, can he speak for or against Amotekun? Okay, so, uh, well, yes, as an individual. As an individual? Yes, okay. he, can, he can speak for or against Amotekun. So he can. Even as a political leader, he can, he can do that. So there's okay. no law, and I don't think there's anything restraining um, Senator Amabola Tinubu from lending his voice. Right. Nobel Obasi, legal practitioner, Mbabashola, Degbu, you political analyst, thank you for your contributions in this segment. Thank you very much. Stay with us. The People Democratic Party expressed their displeasure with the Supreme Court judgment, sacking of Emeka Hildior as the Imo State Governor, and have embarked on a protest to make this known. This and more coming up in our next discussion. Stay with us.